when you're sewing seams with corners and points, you'll be relying a lot on your stitch width here. And so I want to be sewing this at the 5 8 or 1.5 centimeters line. And so I'm going to come along there. And when I'm approaching the corner, I'm just going to slow down because I want to stop with my needle being what I think is equidistant from this side as it is from this side. And with my needle down, I'm going to do what's called a pivot, just like in basketball where you leave your one foot down and turn. Same with in sewing, a pivot is your needle is going to stay down, lift up your presser foot and you can turn. I want to see if I'm at the 15 line and I'm not. I'm going to go back and just turn the, the, turn the wheel one or maybe two more stitches needle down turn and now I'm back at the line that I want to be at and so I can continue now at the 5 8 or 1.5 centimeter line It'll be the exact same technique at a point like this slowing down and when, I'm th when I think my needle is the same distance from both sides, I'm going to leave the needle down, lift, a press lift the presser foot and turn. And I could go maybe one more stitch, needle down and turn. Now I'm right back at my sewing line. When you sew corners and points, before you can turn this right side out, you need to clip your corners. And so I'll be cutting off pretty close to the sewing line but I'm not cutting my stitches and now you can see why you need a good clean pivot you cannot sew past and past because you're you would be cutting those stitches off and then this would unravel when you turn it so it has to be a good clean pivot so you can cut off your extra fabric so you're reducing bulk when you turn that right side out same at the point here Point, I'm going to be cutting way back here and so you can see that this seam allowance it has to all pack into that point so I want to trim it down enough that it's not overlapping so that is sewing corners and points and trimming your excess fabric